and we are back. I love. I never ever tire. I can sit there watching that guitar swing all day. You know, mm-hmm. amazing. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Forgotten Hello. Horror Podcast. I'm David Dark. This handsome bastard here is the A Train, Anthony, and together we are the masters of the macabre. So, Anthony, as usual, what have we got on today? We've got Double Carpenter, Christine versus the Fog. So I'm, I'm sure ways. everyone's uh, I'm sure everyone's heard of them too and seen them. <clears throat> two real, real heavyweights, mm. and two. I think the these two films they, they often get overshadowed by the likes of Halloween and the Thing. Mm. But they're very much, they're very much up there with Halloween and the thing for greatness. See, I, I, um, I'd actually put fog over the thing myself. Yeah, me too. Um, Christine's probably as good as. So, but I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of. I know we're going off track, but I'm not. I like the film, but I'm not like. Like a lot of people really love the thing, whereas I just think it's all right. Yeah, I find that category too. Um, I think it's a great film. I think there's it was one of the last great creature effects, mm-hmm. I think, on, on film. Um, but yeah, I was like you, I, I love Kurt Russell, but to me, Kurt Russell always be Snake Pliskin, <laughs> mm-hmm. and he, you know, but. Back to the fog, the fog, Anthony. Um, first saw this, and to to my eternal shame, I do not have the VHS this week. There's no wow. There's no <laughs> fog VHS in my vault, which feels really, really weird. I feel like I'm letting everybody down by not having the VHS because I don't only have the VHS. You took it back. <laughs> <laughs> They no, came back the from fog. the sea and took it. Yeah. Uh, Blake come for his gold and took the, the preset back. <laughs> Behold, the treasures of the seas. Uh, and he said, give me, ar, Davy Dar, give mm. me that treasure. And he took back my preset VHS. No, in all fairness, folks, I've never had the fog on VHS, on preset VHS. Um, I wanted it, but I could never. I, it was quite a rare one. The, the, at my video shop, they had a copy of it, and for the love of me, I don't know what happened. Somebody else probably bought it, the bastards. But you know, and and I've never, I never, and I never actually came across it on the flea market either, where I bought all the rest of my preserts and X rentals. So the fog was a pretty, pretty hard one to to get hold mm-hmm. of on preserts, and I wouldn't like to go on to eBay today and try and locate one and. Haggle with a, a seller who's going to put a hundred and fifty pound, hundred and fifty exactly. If you can find it, a hundred and fifty pound price tag on the thing because I saw. I know we're going off topic. I saw uh, Big Trouble in Little China X rental VHS, which I used to own, and they were charging one hundred and fifty plus for that. And I thought, no way, one hundred and fifty quid uh-huh. is David Lopan worth it? I actually like David Lopan. He actually, he looks like Carpenter now. John Carpenter's morphed into <laughs> David Lopan, hasn't he? <laughs> uh, oh, thank you. Oh, uh, looks like a miserable bastard as well, John Carpenter. Every photo I've seen him on, he never smiles. Fucking oh, worse than me. Yeah, and he's, yeah uh, I watched an interview with him and, he, and he, he's not impressed with anybody at all. Oh, no. Why the fuck? Why the right fuck? miserable bastard? Why? Why? I mean, I get it. Everybody talks to him about Halloween. I get it. But it made him. Mind you, you don't know what goes on behind the scenes. But he does. Mm. He doesn't seem to give a, a rat's ass about anybody, does he? Miserable. Oh, look at Savini and his fucking comments. But anyway, let's let's not get let's not go there. <laughs> Um, you'll, have, you'll have us doing Hulk Hogan ripping our fucking uh, shirts off. Fucking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, um, well, I forgot what Every I Friday the 13th, that. fans stupid if they watch anything past part yeah. one. Yeah. He's made fucking a fucking living out of it, though, hasn't he? Exactly. 
It's his biggest fucking films. Well, I'll, well, I'll have sixty pounds for my autograph. Dead. I'll have sixty pounds for my autograph and another sixty pounds to for my photo. Yeah, to, to my photo on Friday the thirteenth. You know, part four. Oh, you can. I'll sign your game for you because I did the kills for the game. But mm. we're all idiots. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Back to. <laughs> Fuck you. You know, this should be, this just should be a rap video. Fuck it. Yeah. You know if he's I mean? watching, if he's watching, I'll fucking punch her in the tits. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> that. I ain't stern. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's what. I've... <laughs> When, See, when did you watch the when did you watch the fog anyway? When was the first time? You watch it on the Red Mist or? descended. The Red Mist descended <laughs> then for a moment. Yeah. Sorry folks, the Red Mist descended. Um the fog, yeah, I watched it back in the day. Um and as I was I was talking to somebody, I can't remember, I think it's my Instagram. I was talking to somebody about it, and because of at that time, the early eighties um, because I was seeing so many video nasties at the time before they were banned, and so many horror films, films like The Fog and and, and Phantasm, and that's it, it was Phantasm, they got lost. They got lost in the sea of blood mm. and guts and carnage. So I, watched, I re-watched The Fog, like Phantasm, um, a few years later, when I was a lot older, and I really appreciated it a far lot more than what I did when I first mm. watched it. Um, so this is this was my version of the fog. The d- double special edition DVD never made the jump to Blu-ray, never had the VHS, but it's a really nice edition. It did have a it did originally have a slipcase on it as well, but again, because I'm a clot sometimes, another one I can be really really heavy handed. It was two discs and. Um, there is a nice, a really nice booklet that comes with it as well. And it's all about the making of young Jamie Lee Curtis there in her second role, second feature role. Carpenter felt bad because he thought Halloween had flopped, so he put Jamie Lee Curtis as a hitchhiker in there because she doesn't really do no purpose to the film, does no. she? She's just there to uh, bonk Tom Atkins and his mustache. But there we go. And there's, and there's the there's mm. the greatest leading lady of all time, Mrs. Cobritz. Yeah. And the kid. I like the bit where they're coming through the window then and Mrs. Cobritz goes out and then Daddy's getting attacked. They're coming through his bedroom door with the claws and he's shouting Mrs. Cobritz. I thought, somehow, kid, I don't think that's Mrs. Cobritz coming through with a with a claw yeah. to get <coughs> out of your bedroom. But it pretty cool <laughs> film. Um, yeah. and the, I like the um, the, drunk, the, the drunken now. priest. The, the the theme to the fog is really really nice. I like mm. it's one of the carpenters' better scores. It's um, it's really it's a nice it's a nice. Uh, I think the um, off the top of my head, it's probably my second favorite uh, carpenter film. Yeah. Yeah, I think. It, it really, it really does get, it does get I a bad rap yeah. considering, considering it, considering obviously he directed Halloween and this was like the year or so after it. It was like, it didn't get the, because Halloween sort of exploded after mm. 1980, especially in England, 1980 Halloween one was still huge. It was still a modern film and it took time to build up, but it, there was a big explosion. So this again. It got lost in that sort of pun fog of madness. Mm. You know, Halloween, it was Michael Myers everywhere and it was everyone wanted the bogeyman. And that's a really, this is a really cool ghost story. This is a really, Mm. really, I mean, I could sit down and watch this as many times as I can watch any good film. You know, it's right up there with the best of them. Well made, brilliant soundtrack, great acting. Janet Lee and Jamie Lee Curtis, mother and daughter, team together, and Nancy Loomis, uh, Ali Brackett from Halloween has another role in this. Um, absolute stunning film, and I do actually like the fact that they're in the shadows. Mm. 
So he talked uh, about I love it, me. I said I first <laughs> I first watched it on, on yet again TV. Fucking telly. I can people there'll be kids watching this. <laughs> Fucking hell, every, every video he does, it's always, it's always been on telly first, because it fucking was in the 80s. Yeah, because they, we didn't have, they early didn't have the video 90s. shops, the cinema. It was fucking awesome, awesome stuff on TV. Yeah. It was only till yeah. when it got into the, say, late 90s up to now that there's nothing on it, shit. But in the 80s, yeah, I can't remember, I think it might have been 86, 87, I think it was on telly, that I think... I know it was in the eighties, obviously, but I can't remember if it was like the late eighties. Um, it was on telly, and I, I, I thought it was fucking awesome. Loved it. Um, at the time, I picked up. I never had the video at all. Didn't even have a sell through. Um, <coughs> the one I had was recorded off telly. <laughs> that was in the early nineties. Um, well, people don't realise, do they? Because we all had our own VHS libraries, and we all recorded everything off telly. Mm-hmm. Everything was recorded. My dad had all his football on his tapes, and I had all my films on off telly. And again, I was quite rare because I was able to purchase preserts and extra rentals off the market off from where I grew up. So I was quite rare in in that. So I didn't, I didn't take. But I always had me stuff taped off TV. Anyway, um, what have you got on the fog, there, mate? You got a Um, cracker, haven't you? Oh, I've got the soundtrack on CD, which is um, so like the 20th anniversary edition or something like that. Yeah. Oh, nice little booklet. Um, yeah. Just the... It's a great soundtrack, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was, it. I think it was 2000 when it came out. Um, Fabulous. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I've got, I did have the DVD years ago, but that, that went. <clears throat> and I've got the, the special um, 4K. I had to think then what it was. <laughs> um, as I said on previous videos, I don't go out and buy 4Ks unless it's a film I really like. And it's not even because it's 4K, it's because it's there's something in it. That could have just been a fucking DVD for all I care, or Blu-ray. Um, so I'll show you a few bits so you get the... <coughs> I can't remember how many discs it is. So it's four discs. <laughs> Hold on. You get four <laughs> discs. <laughs> do, 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 do. There you go. So, yeah, you get the, obviously the 4K, 4K of it. Uh, the Blu-ray version of it, um, extras on Blu-ray, and yet again, the soundtrack <laughs> on the CD. Oh, that's a that's a bit of a, a bit of an addition, that is, isn't it? And then you get a little little poster, which I'm a bit pissed off with because it's new artwork. I'd rather have had the old one, but right. I didn't, uh, obviously, I didn't make it. I've not opened these, but you get a few art, little lobby cards. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a booklet. So... Yeah, expensive, that, Ant. Hmm? Was it expensive, oh. that version? I can't fuck it. I think 30 quid, I think. I bought it when it was brand new from HMV. Right. Um, yeah, I think you... it was 30. You'll probably pay 50, 40, 50 pound upwards now for that, I think. Probably. Um, so, yeah. Um, like I said, I really love the film. Um, it's just one of them films that I watched as a kid and it's just stuck with me. I've always liked it. Uh, yeah. The only problem is, though, with this set, I know they released other ones and I don't know if, it, if they're the same, but the contents is too thick big for the box so it bulge bulges it's the only downside which i didn't like. need to make bigger boxes we're gonna need a bigger boat gonna need a bigger boat yeah. yeah um they have released this on a single disc 4k which i didn't want because <laughs> i wanted the extras right. um, yeah yeah it was, you do don't you yeah I'm not, like i said i'm not going to go out and out my way to buy a 4k but unless it's got something in it that I want, if you know what I mean, like the extra yeah, content. Oh, yeah. yeah, 
Oh, you're not, not going to on Blu-ray in that. You know, I'm not going to pay 20 odd quid, 30 quid for a fucking 4K when yeah. I really couldn't give I couldn't give a flying barrel a monkey piss. You know, um, I'm not I've not bought it to have a, have a crystal. You know, I've not bought it to see. Oh, look how crystal clear the picture is. Fucking interested. Where did where did a flying barrel of monkey piss come from? <laughs> Put on old, just popped into my head. Are you thinking of Savini again? <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, yeah. So that's it. That's all I've got on the fog. Um, yeah, both of us are bare bones, there, aren't we? Well, yeah. that's a lovely addition, mate. Um, so swiftly Pretty moving cool. on to. I think it's my favourite soundtrack of Carpenter. I love the soundtrack to Christine. I mean, I love the, the rock and roll songs he's got in, in Christine off the radio with Christine's, you know, Christine's thoughts and what she's going through. But I love the soundtrack, the score. John Carpenter's score. There's two scores by Carpenter that I really, really love. Halloween 3 and Christine... And you can hear hints of Christine in Halloween 3. You listen to Halloween 3 soundtrack, there's hints where Carpenter was going with his music, the synthesizers. Mm. And, um, yeah, I've got it. I've got it. Yeah, see, folks, back on track, folks. It's the X-Rental VHS. It was released as a pre-cert. It came out. It came out. Just on the cusp of just at the end, it was eighty three. It came out, so it was, and then it came in around eighty four, same as Elm Street. Just on mm. the cusp, and the original, the original first release of it um, didn't have the eighteen certificate here and the eighteen certificate here. It just had a black certificate eighteen here, and that's the only difference. So when the Video Nasties Act came in and all that, it was obviously re resubmitted. It was not on the list anyway because there was hardly anything in it of violence or anything. That's what I mean. I don't know why it's an 18. The really added bad language. Um, and this is the second release, the X-Rental uh, from Columbia with the red, the red X-Rental box, Columbia. The Karate Kid also had the same sort of red box. Well, this was a bit of a... A, a happening modern tape because it had a, a red band to match Christine on the top, mm. which I always thought was cool. Check that out, Ant. Mm. Look at that. Nice. Nice little touch with that. Christine's blood. She'll possess you, then destroy you. Sounds like someone I know. Mm. The, um... <laughs> So yeah, that yeah, the X rental VHS there cost me two pound, I think. And then I didn't have it on DVD, believe it enough. And then again, I mentioned a friend of mine, Donnie, Cinema Seven Seven, in that big box. He was get he was upgrading his to Blu-ray, so he passed me. And this is the um, Amsterdam. This is from mm. Holland. The Dutch uh, version, so it's region two still, but it is from Amsterdam, so it's it's their version, and it's only a oh sorry, twelve. Twelve. They had a twelve on the DVD. This is a special <laughs> edition. Um, nothing inside it. Same disc, but it got some extras, audio commentary. Interviews, you know, nice little touch, nice cover as well. Bit of a different cover to our English version. See with Adrian mm -hmm. Paul there and the car, um, beautiful car. Yeah. Out of Baywatch. Then, <laughs> pardon? Out of Baywatch. Was she in Baywatch? She in Baywatch. Yeah, in was the, she? was it late 80s, early 90s? Right. Right. And then I'm going really old school here, people. This is not a, a reprint for 2020. This is the original <laughs> the original Wheels of Steel right here. Old school. 
and this is the music. You get Christine Attacks, um, which is a real cool, but it's all the, all the songs. The back has got the, the ra it's Christine's radio. Motown. It's got nothing, it's nothing on the thing. It's just the, the original Motown. The Motown sleeve. So some action this does, mate. This has been this has been through the walls, this has. There is the original soundtrack. And last but not least, for the Christine bundle. I've got a license plate. CQB two four one. How about that? Cool. Nice little keepsake. Nice. I'll try and put it on my car outside. <laughs> See how far I get. Yeah. Nice license plate there. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> yeah, I got it as a on a holder up there. But I thought, seeing as a Christine video with with a Christine heritage, I shall. That was, that was um, I can't remember when I first watched that. I can't remember if it was on a rental on TV or or what. Well, my 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 dad, my dad's friend, my my dad's friend had a pirate. He had a he had a habit of pirating films, and I watched a lot of these. But unlike a lot of them, where you couldn't make the picture out, it was all snowy, and he couldn't make anything out with pirates. He always used to do pirates, and they always had they were all shit up copies. So I watched Christine first on a pirate before it got actually released. Mm -hmm. Properly, um, it yeah, it was it, I, from the moment it was a car and it was it was great. I loved it. Um, and yeah. like like most like the fog, Halloween, the fog, Christine, Carpenter's films was never never very gory. They just had that supernatural edge to all of them. If you think about it, you know they were they were quite ghostly. These, these films and uh, this Christine, well. Loved it. So, Anthony, your thoughts? Yeah, like I was saying, I, don't, I can't remember. Obviously, I watched it on video, but I can't remember if someone rented it from the video shop or I was in high school and someone lent it me. I really, it's one of them films I just can't remember. I watched it in, it would have been from, I'd say, 92, was would have been then or earlier, but I can't remember which. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I always remember watching it, and I thought it was always you know it was something different. You don't really, don't really see a vehicle or an inanimate, inanimate, inanimate objects that um doing you know in horror films. Really, there is obviously there is a few, but it's usually a person or a ghost. Um, so yeah, I thought it was really different. I liked it. Um, the only thing I have is, which is. You know, which I think everyone only came out a few years ago. It was a double disc, um, Blu ray from Indicator. It's good though, yeah, yeah. Um, I never owned the, I never owned the DVD, I never had a sell through or X rental or anything. Um, well, yeah, I thought I'd pick this up because I liked, I liked the film, so yeah, got that. Um, yeah. I think, like you said before, it's underrated. I think I think people do forget. Yeah. You know, as soon as someone says Carpenter, I think everyone automatically thinks of Halloween, and yeah. it is my favourite Carpenter film. But yeah. he's done he's done some shit, but he's also doing some really <laughs> good stuff. That's, that's <laughs> probably why he's miserable. Yeah. Um, he's he's, he's probably he's probably, he probably watched yeah. the ward and thought, where did it where did it all go wrong? Well, it's like Big Trouble in Little China. I thought it, it's all right, but it's not as good as people say it is, if you know what I mean. It's, it's not worth £150 you know, for an X rental. Is it fuck? You say, I wanna... Couldn't have put it fine myself. From both me and him, remember the alley mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beware the moon. Beware the moon, yeah, whatever. And, um, Keep to the road. And we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.